For a day, girl, without you, and I wonder, it's a feeling I ride you to see. Can you help me The life of me Oh baby Kia ora, kia ora. Hey 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 Is it just me or does my camera keep Dropping Yeah it looks like it's uh, Wilting on you bro the incremental sag. And are we talking about the camera? What are we talking about? <laughs> Hang on. Oh well, I'll keep playing with it and see what happens. Hey Dad, how's it going? Yeah. All good. Yeah. Got an intense piece you're working on there. Good to Desiree. Good to John Murphy. Hey bro, good to see ya. Took away. Good about. Oh, John there too. Yeah, John's there. Okay. And someone Flavel, who hasn't seen you in a very long time. Last time, time you saw them was when them and their papa stopped into your homestead. LDKT. Oh. LDKT. I don't know what that stands for. Get 
Thank you, George, seeing in the hearts out there on Twitch. Right now. Ooh, I wonder. <sighs> can you hear me? My heart's on cold. I'm making it worse. Jesus. Her name is, uh, it's Gail Flavel. Papa is Terewiti. Got a Gail. Koro Pony's Moko. Koro Pony. Pony. Flavel. Oh, okay. There's a close up of my beard, everybody. Too close, too close. Pull back, pull back. Uh, what's been going on? Hey, Tashi George, over on Twitch. Um, oh, you know, I've been sweating. It's muggy. Is it still muggy up there in Auckland? Oh, only when it's overcast. That It's been rainy and hot. Yep. Oh, Someone yeah. was saying the other day that it was the, the most humid days on record in Auckland. Okay. So three of the days, three of those really bad days. So, um, no, it's not too bad at the moment because the sky's clear. Yeah, we're certainly um, turning into a tropical nation. Oh, nice. You like it, eh, Dad? Oh, I love it. <laughs> love it. Like yourself a bit of global warming. Remind me of Thailand. Slappy, yeah, that's your, uh, your dad's What's that? Instagram. Oh, his, his Facebook story. Hey, this is a nice photo, Dan. Hey. It's a nice photo. Big cheesy smile. Throwing off the false teeth. Uh, I think we've got a guest tonight too, haven't we? Yep. We've got a couple of guests. Yep. Oh, yeah, true. Who's on? Uh, well, Rawari Ruru. Oh, yeah. That's you lined your... that up, didn't you? What? Oh, Tafinua did. Oh, Tafinua. Yeah. Got a fence. Uh, yeah, so we got Rawari Ruru coming on at 6.30 to have a quarter door. And then we got the uh, notorious Tina Nutter. Uh, she's on at seven o'clock to come and have a court at all. Have I a catch up. Say Tina Nutter, but... Yeah, not an Atta Nutter. Yeah. But an Atta Nutter. 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 Um, is the. Who's Dave, who's okay. Dave Rudu? Dead? Uh, Dave Lulu was a guy that, uh, that joined up with Na Tamatua with us in the 70s. And uh, he, he was, uh, he, he, he was with, with the Mormon church and on a mission over in, in the States. And he was a very close friend of mine. And, uh, he was a very close friend of friends of mine for the Social Action Group from Christchurch. So I met up with him. And so... Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I always had uh, a lot of time for Rawiri Dudu and, um, you know, one of those early, early activists and he'd been around a long time, 50 years and uh, he got some good call and uh, just to share media to talk about um, what, what was it like, what was it like, what was, it, what was the, the, the protest movement for us back in the 70s? And I, I think the quarter will be around that. 
and to talk and to share some of our our experiences and um, what was it? What were we what were we trying to get at? And um, it would be it should be an interesting call. It all that that's what really want we want to share with you uh, with the fire night tonight about that. And, uh, uh, rather than you know what's going on today, but I think it's really important that what uh, what actually happened 50 years ago, and it it, it gives some an idea around what was going through our own minds and what was going through in our feelings and our emotions, and uh, and so I think um, nobody should be able to share some of those thoughts with us today. Oh. I, I want to probably... know how you guys did anything with without the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, no social media. No social media. Media, you physically had to be there. So you so look look at the, at the landscape. So if you think about, because um, I was based in Christchurch, so I probably one of the very few, few of us at that time because I was available, I was free, I just done my time as an interior decorator. And I was uh, was a really big shift for me, and uh, and well for all of us really my generation, uh, having a voice, and uh, so we physically had to hitchhike, really up with the Koro Matua, and uh, and just hit the road. So you you had to meet up, line up with uh, building up a relationship with a different organisation. So we had. Um, Parke organisation, groups like the Māori organisation of human rights, uh, people like Tom Puata, uh, or the old activists from the 50s. Uh, a lot of these guys was involved with the, uh, with the, uh, particularly with the struggles around with with the working class struggles, particularly with the uh, within the trade union movement. But there was a movement in, internally outside the trade union movements. Uh, within the, uh, the Siemens Union, the Water Siders Union, and, uh, and yeah, and trying to, you know, cause the, 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 the kind of quarter we had, you know, because you know, some of the language that came out, they started a revolution, and, uh, and then they talk about that, the revolution, so we can share some of that sort of uh, what was that about. And, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll be talking to Rawadi about that. He was around then, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, totally. And, um, you know, because he, um, yeah. And then he went and studied law. So um, he was there. I think he did the law. Um, yeah, so what's shifting? It'd be good to see what actually shifting within the Mormon church and within the church. And, uh, but uh, I would rather him talk about that, that uh, talk about that experience and shifting him from that to where it is. So a bit, I think it would be really good to have some perspective around that and um, not just from Tamiti, but really perspective from people from my generation. Yeah. Shout out to the, uh, the crew out on Twitch, Too Slick, Māori yep. Maiden, Axiom. Yep. Kilfano, Maori Maiden, the Ultra Mega. Uh, anybody who thinks that Dad's not into uh, misinformation, uh, you're wrong. I don't, can I get them to focus? <laughs> this is a post today saying that uh, there's lives yeah, on at five. At 5 PM. Actually, on at six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, and maybe because you know, particularly in the last few days, that there's um. It's okay, you know, people are uh, uh, having some uh, personal attack on, on me, myself, but that's okay, that's, that's nothing new to me. You're and, a paid stooge, Coopapa. Yeah, you know, and... Um, sellout, sellout, bro. What a sellout fella. Yeah, I'm a sellout, and uh, I don't know what they can, I, I um, accepted the government money for, and all, all of that's cordial. And... Um, I see you uh, rolling around in your... In your Tesla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I remember Drinking. back in, in the 70s, and um, there were people uh, within my own community, my father, hmm, tell me, tell me, go work with how make one and your communistic ideas, and uh, that, that kind of cordial. And uh, they were a little, a little bit uh, suspicious. 
about my involvement with the, uh, with the socialist view, having the socialist view and having a, a Marxist, Leninist sort of kind of view. And, and uh, although they, they want me to participate, but they say, leave all your communist stuff on the side. Uh, so you come in with your, your Maori tana, your Tuhue tana, your Waikato tana. So it was a, a really interesting period of time around that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Set, yeah. From, from catch yeah. up in St. Albans, 30021. You've got a split screen going on there, my bro, on the, on the uh, broadcast. Mm. Oh, that's it. Okay, here we go. There you go, there you go. We've we got Rawiri coming in there. Kia ora. Kia ora, Rawiri. Hey, kia ora, kia ora. Hey, good day. Oh, good day. Kia ora, kia ora. Good bro. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Hey. Good to play. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you yeah. see us okay there, bro? Yep. Awesome. Yep. Can you hear us okay there? there? Oh, really? Can you hear me? Hi. Kataya Turungo. Oh, kapai, kapai. Hey, um uh no my hara my kid in a ten a uh fakaturana. Uh, well, and I thought I, I was trying to call you, but uh, apparently you're, on, you're online. But uh, probably the cope for me, you probably. Yeah, no, um, in my office, I, the building I work in, I won't receive texts or phone calls if I'm inside the building. Oh, I'll okay. wait till the afternoon to find out who's been ringing me, <laughs> who's been texting. Oh, hi. Hi, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you at a dark spot? Is your office in a dark? Uh, no, no, shall I need, you need some light or something. No, oh, no, 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 no. A, a, a cellular uh, dark spot Why you don't get messages and a communications dark spot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, at work, uh, we are, we're in our, li we're temporarily there. They're building new buildings and we're in part of the library, which blocks everything out. So I don't know why, it just don't come through. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I was just sharing some thoughts around how I first met you in um, many years ago, oh, fifty yeah, odd yeah. years ago. And um, can you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. remind us, brother. Fifty <laughs> 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 one years ago, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In uh, Newtown, in Newtown, in uh, in oh, Wellington. That's the section, ma. Yeah, that's it. Oh, Mike, Mike Tucker. Oh no, yeah, the first is. What do they call themselves? Uh, socialist action. Oh, they were the Trotskyists. Yeah, they're, they're Trotskyites. Yeah, they're Trotskyites. Uh, they're not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hugh Faison, uh, George Faison, uh, Russell, oh, what are they done in one or one new year, yeah. Uh, they were fellows that they went to uh, church college with you, did they? I think their father, wasn't he a something, had been in the, the army or wasn't he a brigadier or something like that, those Faisons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think I might be telling, I might be telling lies. Hey, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, I guess we, you know, people know my little bit of story. So, uh, you know, uh, what, what probably the part, the part to you around that. What, what, what actually shifted your movie from uh, during that uh, in those early days, and um, uh, and 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 got yourself involved with the. Uh, with the Māori movement, what, what was happening for you back then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I came out, you know, uh, I spent a couple of years over in the States working on um, Indian reservations and, uh, you know, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Yeah. And uh, so when I came back to uh, Aotearoa uh, in June 71, the first interaction I had with Tamatoa was when I saw I think it was Toto Eduard being interviewed on TV. And I really liked what he was saying. He was talking about, you know, how if you roll, like he had a um, roll your own cigarette. And yeah. somebody said to him when he rolled the boy, that's a real Māori cigarette. So those sort of put downs that were still then, anything that wasn't up to standard was, you know, given a tag like Māori. Oh, yeah. And I just thought, no, I just thought they were very articulate. And I watched a few other things. And it wasn't until, yeah, in 72, uh, March 72, when you came up from Christchurch, I don't know what you came up for, but there was that, um, uh, that the, uh, conference up at um, Victoria University. Yeah. 
and we went uh, we I went up there and you were the first one I met from Ngatamato and then I think the next day I can't remember who exactly was up uh, Sid might have been there Sid and Hannah but there was two or three others I don't know whether I can't remember the editor was there but yeah there were some others and I thought it was uh, quite interesting just to watch to listen and hear them be so assertive about their politics yes whereas you know in the past we were just getting shut down left right and center and I thought can't I a group of young Māori that are willing to um, actually confront the issues, take them on and be, you know, brave enough to get out there in public and state them. So, yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, and then then during that period of time that yourself and um, Te Ata Wikihira and you, you set up the um, uh, um, some legal aid stuff then call for, for young Māori going to court. Yeah, yeah, and, and that, and that program was really driven by John Hippolyte and uh, Oliver Sutherland from down in Nelson. They did a, a program down there and their program showed that uh, if, uh, yeah, you know, all, if young Māori were appearing in the magistrates' courts, their tendency was to plead guilty to the charge whether or not they were guilty of it, just so they could get it out of their face and get back to work. And so, you know, so a lot of our people were actually getting um, criminalised for things that they weren't necessarily guilty of. And so, um, Teata and uh, Irueta and, uh, you know, Josie and a few of those others, they all got together and we started supporting Teata and Irueta to do that work. I can't, uh, I know that I talked to Josie and Briar when up at Tauranga when we were there a couple, about a month ago. Aye, aye, aye. And they were saying that um, they were contributing to help keep uh, Irueta and uh theater active in those courts and they were doing a great job and they you know because they were there every day they were able to um putty putty some of those young uh, young uh, Pākehā lawyers that were down there representing other people that could afford them so often uh, uh Eru and uh Teata would talk to them and get them to go and uh, be the speaker for some of those other young Māori people that were appearing in the court so yeah, so that was in the Magistrates' Courts, which is about down where all those protesters are at the moment, across the road where the old Magistrates' Court used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Where we had How you been anyway, the... Tommy? So, how are you How you been? Oh, a bike, a bike. Yeah. Oh, couple. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Rabudi, so, um, so you, you mentioned that you were you were spending a bit of time in uh, with the Native Americans. Is that right? Is that you? you yeah, were... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and what, I, what was it about what was it that you were seeing sort of you know in terms of uh being over there uh and the similarities or what was it exactly well, yeah, that you, you know, were seeing? like you know one thing that made me laugh is you know over here we had a, a bureau of uh, not a bureau we had Māori affairs over there they got a bureau of indian affairs you know and uh, the, but there was also a lot of differences you know they were confined to reservations and uh, if they were on the reservations, then uh, they, you know, if they left the reservations and went out to the cities for work or anything else, they lost any sort of uh, housing rights or food thing. Because if they stayed on the, on the reservations, uh, every month the U.S. government would give them food passes. They give them boxes of, uh, I think they'd have cheese in them. They'd have meat, tins of meat. They would have uh, power, um, flour. They would have. Um, yeah, beans, they would have a whole lot of uh, food commodities and all stamped in purple with US government, not to be sold or whatever. But every month uh, they were issuing those uh, food commodities to the Indians uh, that stayed on the reservations. And that was one way of keeping there because if they left and went, left the reservation, they lost all those uh, things. So some of them were sort of trapped in the, and you know, unemployment, uh, Drinking, you know, alcohol was a big problem with, uh, you know, and this I'm talking about, I was there in 69, from 69 to 71, so I was over there for two years. And I worked in places like um, uh, Missoula, Montana. I worked in a place called Rocky Boys, Montana. I worked in uh, Billings, oh no, not necessarily Billings, outside of a place called Billings, Montana, but that was on the Crow Indian Reservation. So I worked on uh, Chippewa Cree Reservations. I worked on Blackfoot in, uh, Reservations. I worked with, uh, Shoshone Bannock. So over the two years I was there, I worked at a number of different places, but um, we were different. And, well, I say we were different in that we weren't isolated onto reservations. I thought that was blooming dreadful. 
and you know it was the worst land um and um i don't know i just it just yeah you know one thing i saw there for the first time and i'm talking about 1969 is a lot of those young indian kids were into uh uh sniffing aerosol you know they'd get the plastic bags they'd turn the can upside down they'd spray the aerosol into the can and they stick it over their faces thing i mean this is the 69 that's probably nine wow. or ten years before that arrived here in aotearoa but it was happening and sniffing petrol you know there was a lot of problems a high alcoholism rate um a high number of um christian churches on each of the reservoir you know uh, you know they'd have lutheran churches there they'd have catholic churches they'd have uh, yeah a number of different churches sometimes on on these reservations so very much being um colonized colonized by the christians uh being fed food commodities by the government and so they were almost like being made to be dependent on the government which i thought was so you saw so you came home and uh, you were worried yeah, about yeah i came that. home in uh, june 71 and uh, you know i think tamato had already been in action for a few months or maybe a year or so by then but in wellington because i lived in wellington i never ran into anybody from tamato until your dad came up in uh, the march uh, 1972 yeah and at victoria university in wellington they had an anti apartheid conference i don't know who organized it who ran it yeah well it's out there that was a heart that, that was the first heart conference and um, oh, okay. the first national and they pulled their speaker from the a colored woman that they uh, they kissed oh, they came what about that man was logan can you remember fellow logan moodley was yeah one yeah yeah from australia that, guy, that was yeah. yeah i can remember logan moodley but, but i'm not sure whether that was the time that he came when that when we had that uh, yes uh, and you were you, 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 you would have drawn uh, comparisons when you came back to having spent that time over in the reservations then coming back and seeing the state of maori them yeah yeah uh yeah so you know uh, so when i came home and, uh, and i mean i i i saw you know a few things uh, happening on tv and i thought yeah yeah i want to be part of that group so you know it wasn't till you know maybe seven eight nine months later i think june June 71 I first saw maybe it was after June 71 when I first saw Toto talking on TV but I thought hey I like what that guy's saying I like what they're saying and so it was really neat you know when about six or nine months later I met your dad at a, at a, at a party in Daniel Street Newtown Wellington and um, went up to the Victoria University to the um, student union building up there and that's where they held the um, anti apartheid so I can remember some of those parker fella i know that fella chris laidlaw he was there i think yeah and yeah that's uh, right i don't know what his role was at that time but he might have had something to do with race but i think he was one of those was he one of those that turned down going to south africa to play rugby in south africa did he yeah do yeah yeah so, uh, there, 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 there was a call around but no maori no tour and yeah that was remember tom puata yeah, that was tom tom puata was involved in it yeah, Tom Puerta, my I ten, you know, so they were actually involved in there. Hey, ten years before Tom at all came out of the. Was Tom then part of the Communist Party? Was he part of the? Oh, Communist he was Union? a member of the Communist Who Party. Was group they were involved with. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, the Maori Organization of Human Rights. Human Rights, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, the Human Rights. Uh, him and uh, back in Martin Ab- Martin Abaker. Martin Abaker, I more here ten now, I. And, and was John Hippolyte. Tom John Hippolyte was part of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Kapai. Yeah, John was quite active, eh, in those sorts of things. Yes. But he was sort of, you know, out of the way. Well, not really out of the way, but I think he was down in Nelson most of the time. He showed up in Wellington sometimes. Yeah. He, he pātai, kia kōrua, tahi. Hi. Um, you know, back in those days and the civil rights movement was happening over in the States and you guys would have talked about and dreamt about revolution. Did you guys actually believe that you could have a revolution? Is that what you you wanted? Is that what you really dreamt about? Taking over and bringing down the system? Uh, you've got to get real, brother. <laughs> <laughs> were you real back then or were you idealistic? I guess that's my part time. 
we would have been wiped out very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, you know, yeah. yeah, I just think that, I mean, yeah, I don't know how you would do it, or what we could have done, I don't know whether we do, you know, we probably, if we went back now to where we were then, I think we do probably, we might do a lot of things differently. But times have changed a lot. You know, like one of the things I can remember from that time, we weren't very mobile. You know, it was a lot of us were. You know, you might have been telling me because you were you were moving all the time. But some of us, you know, we didn't have cars, you know, and we, I don't know, we relied on people that did have cars to get to hui's, to get to places, to get to meetings. To, and I don't know whose cars we use because I think Tata used to normally have a car. Usually Tata would have a car. Uh, Edward might have a car. I think he had a V-dub or something. But we were very limited with what the... Uh, oh, Vernon Winnitana might have had a vehicle. But we were very limited with what wheels we had. So if we got anywhere, I don't know how. I, don't, I think we would, we must have been uh, putty putting people for rides everywhere. And you didn't have uh, cell phones, let alone social media yeah, and messaging yeah, yeah. apps. So, and you know, what we amazing. I just think what amazing things cell phones are. Now, wherever you are in the country, you can just bring anybody. You know, before you had to find a phone box to get to a house or go to a phone box or uh, was you know. And but uh, but despite all that, we managed to get stuff done. We managed to communicate. We managed to get messages around the country. Uh, it'd be a lot more efficient if we had the uh, the technology that's available to us now. So but with there... that, um, you were just saying that, uh, you know, I'm just wondering if it was if it was an age thing, you know, if you could have, um, you know, the enthusiasm and the the passion that comes with with being young fellas, you can, it's easy yeah. to look back on it today and go, oh, yeah, now we would have been we would have been buggered if we thought uh, we were gonna um, take on the system. But uh, but is that something that you think as young young people? Uh, oh, I think, you know, the reality is we had to take on, the, you know, we took them on verbally, verbally, you know, that was our best weapon is the things we said, the things, and showing a face and going down to that place where all those COVID people are at the moment protesting, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just think, uh, you know, revolution, we just didn't have the context in there. The arms, I mean, the army were all there. We. I don't think, well, well I, let's put it this way. I didn't really contemplate that. I just think the possibilities of, you know, just getting a few people to su support some of the things, you know, which were non-radical, well, which I thought were non-radical, was hard convincing our people to support that without, you know, taking them to extremes that they might think, oh, no, I don't want nothing to do with that. So you pushed for policy but, change. I'm sure there were some. I'm sure there were some. Hmm. But I don't know anybody in... Uh, in the in the Ropu in uh, Puneke that were were talking that way or talking like that, there may have been some. I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there was some discussion. I think revolution wasn't necessarily going to war. It's a, it's a yeah. It's a psychological stuff. It's really around. Um, so we we did hear to talk to people like um, uh, Matthew Data in the in the early days. Uh, we did have yeah. some kind of conversation with people like that, and so yeah. we're, but we were quite suspicious of a politician back in the days. Uh, we we did have a, we did have a conversation. We did draw some of the politician when we were down in Parliament. I don't, I don't know whether you remember. Uh, we called upon the Maori Affairs uh, Minister Duncan McIntyre. And, yes. and, and and draw them into it. Uh, draw them into a, uh, having those conversation about um, yeah about their challenging them about their policies and the implementation yeah, yeah. of a card around the real uh, there was a, there was conversation around uh, Maori fighting park air war and there was a yeah, call yeah, about yeah, not yeah, one yeah, more yeah. acre to be sold so those those are the the slogans and the kupu that we we, we kind of yeah, out there saying those things. Yeah, yeah, and and I, and I think you know that was one of the things that just you know the 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 anti-racism movement coincided with all those other movements that were happening at that time, including the anti-war movement, and certainly there was strong feeling there. And you're right. I mean, look what's happening now. You know, uh, Russia's going to invade uh, next door. And then there's thousands of people all around there that, uh, you know, what, that, you know, so we, I don't know, we might end up in another freaking war. And I'm thinking, hmm, not good. 
Not good. Well, luckily we're not part of NATO. <laughs> yeah, and I hope we never do. I blooming frick, I don't want us to have anything to do oh, with yeah, that. I don't bullies. know why we're ending up in Afghanistan and all those places all over the world, killing other indigenous people. They've got nothing to do with us or our politics. How the hell, are, what threat are they to us over here? That's what happens think... to have all those bloody ANZUS and uh, whatever, all those NATOs and CETOs or whatever the hell they are, and people all go there and uh, because they have uh, previous business dealings with each other, they think they need to be supporting each other. Aye, aye, aye. I mean, despite, uh, so you were saying that there's quite a few different kind of movements coming through yeah. uh, back in your day. And I mean, yeah, I guess- was, You know, the women's liberation movement was quite strong at the time. You had a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of activism around uh, uh, communism, you know, you had the, the, the New Communist Party and you had the, uh, the Chinese, uh, people that were loyal to the Chinese version and people I flattered with in Newtown we were part of the Trotskyist things and then you had other and I just thought so there was a lot yeah I think it was a, maybe it was a sign of the times maybe it was just a time when people were starting to wake up and get activated around a number of different kaupapa you know and I think Ngāta Matua just happened to be the ones that that, that chose to progress uh, the battle you know the Māori fight fight for Māori of Māori rights was there was there much like did it feel like competition to get airtime? I mean, given that you guys um, didn't didn't have much, you know, no social media or any of those kind of, you only had very yeah, limited yeah, channels. Yeah, Is yeah, it, yeah. Did you um, find yourselves competing for, for you know, to get um, your message out there? No, because, you know, people were curious. Parkers were curious because they weren't used to Māori protesting. They weren't used to Māori making a stand on issues. Yes, you know, a few issues over the years, like, the, you know, no Māori's no tour. Um, but I think you know, then that was, I think that was 1960 when that happened. Well, I think it was about another 10 years before Tamatoa emerged. So I don't know, you know, how much other activity Tom and other groups that were around at that time continued. Uh, thing. But I just thought some of the things that Tamatoa did, you know, in the things like going to Hui's, you know, like, and, and, and this is one thing I really admire Vern, Vern Winnie Tamatoa, is that he would take us to all these different places, you know, to the Māori, Wellington rugby place to ask them to come out against the tour and we would go to a number of different places because he was quite a well-known uh, rugby identity at that time, Vern Winitana. And he um, he got us into lots of doors and we'd go there and we would put our thing and you know, none of them would, <laughs> they'd boot us out, but you know, at least he, we were, you know, having the courage to, to front up to our own people and try to get them to come out against the New Zealand Māori rugby and to come out against the tour, but you know, they were also committed to the rugby union that nah waste of time waste of time and would you get much was there much sort of pushback in terms of you know you guys being out there young radicals uh trying to get your message out and were you getting you know a bit uh, of... not really i don't you know i don't really feel i didn't really feel threatened at any time even though you know we i don't know where we went i think we were probably always outnumbered but it used to make me laugh, like sometimes on on um, um, Waitangi Day, you know, we do go down to the um, Wailita Railway Station and hand out lots of uh, flyers, you know, for all the people that are coming in on the morning, the, all the morning workers. So we'd be down at the railway station and you have flyers. And then when <coughs> nine o'clock arrived and basically everybody was at work, then we'd walk up, um, you know, Lambton Key up around uh, Willis Street and down to uh, up Manor Street and into Cuba Mall and then, you know, have who is up Cuba Mall. But that Miyako always used to make me laugh because he would, you know, he would be walking up the street and say <laughs> things like this, read all about it, read all about it, read about why itch and twitch and want to pin, punch a parker in the nose. You know, so there was those sort of things and it would make people turn around and, hey, what the hell is saying? He says, roll up, roll up. Come here, come and listen to why I itch and twitch. I want to punch a parker in the nose. I thought, oh, God. So Dunn was pretty good at those little one line things he used to say. But it would make people react and it would get their attention. But, you know, um, I think basically we were just trying to get a message across and getting people to listen somehow. Somehow. And I don't think uh, you had to punch them in the nose to get them to listen, but it certainly got their attention. <laughs> oh, he was a bully. He was a bully, bro. He's yeah. one of the uh, the few OG protesters that's actually down in Wellington. I was reading one of his posts. He was complaining 
about uh, he, he tried to put himself on the list to get on the PA system, to get on the mic for his kaupapa, yeah, and yeah. apparently they, they, they didn't put him up. So he was moaning and, you know, oh, it's always the same. The person who, who controls the PA system is the person who controls the narrative. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true because I've seen I've seen that happen before. And who is that? Uh, uh, what's that with Big Marae uh, opposite the railway station? That uh, Tiatiawa one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whatever that one is. Pipitea. Yeah. Pipitea. They were doing that. I've been to who is like that. We're out there at the Puananga and uh, who's that? Uh, Eddie Jury's wife, that lawyer woman. I forget her name now. Donna. 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 Hall. Donna. Hall. Donna. Donna. Hall. Yeah, yeah. I've seen her and... Uh, uh, and after that, the uh, Puananga controlling the mic and, and making sure, vetting who has a right to speak. And yeah, I mean, that's so obvious sometimes that's happening in the series. And they certainly weren't giving the mic to us to ask questions. So, and I am not talking in recent years. I'm talking about the 90s. You know, this is re recent. It's not back in the 70s. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about, you know, who is as recent as the 90s. We go down there to, um, uh, I forget the name of that, Te Ate Mai, opposite, the, just along for the railway station. Okay. Hey, yes, uh, it happened. Can you can you remember the land march in the seventy five? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, what was your role back then? Well, I don't know. For some reason, uh, just so happy. Oh, yep. Yeah. Tata, Tata had a Tata had a wagon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a, a Volkswagen Combi. Yeah. And we um, left Wellington in his Volkswagen Combi to go up to Auckland. I think the march was starting on the Saturday. It was a Saturday. They left um, up the top and um, we only got as far as Auckland on the first day. And um, Chata's van didn't have, it had, something was wrong with the um, things that charge your battery. I don't know what it is anyway. It was with the what? Oh, and my partner tells me the alternator. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing that charges your battery in the car. It's the alternator. Yeah, yep. the alternator was puckered in. We couldn't drive at night. So the first night we drove up, we stayed at Toda's in Auckland. And then the next day we drove from Auckland and we finally caught up to the march just as it was about five or six Ks out of uh, uh, Takao. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wai Mirirangi. I think Wai Mirirangi is the name of the fuddy we stayed in uh, the, that night. I'm not sure whether they're the smoke people, Oahi, what are they, the, who, or Ngati uh, Tararawa, yeah. Ngati Kahu, and uh, Ngati oh, I forget that other Kiwi yeah, that's Ngati there, but, uh, Yeah, Wai Mirirangi, that was, so we, we sort of caught, the, we caught them up before they got to the, the first uh, night. And it wasn't long after that, within a day or two, there was a guy hitched up from Wanganui. His name was um, Ida, Ida Waitai, he belonged to the Waitai family. And he joined us. So we were the sort of three that shared the, the driving of his van while we were on the land march. But, you know, it was always uh, everybody wanted to walk and nobody wanted to drive. So, you know. <laughs> So it was always, but we, you know, I think it was fair that we took turns driving so that everybody had a chance to get out on uh, and do the hikoi. Mm. Mm. And so, um, when those kind of uh, those kind of actions were, um, you know, with the march and, and any else, anything else that was kind of organised, like did everyone have their role in terms of how it all? How it all kind of panned well, out was a bit loose. Yes, 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 and no. And and I think one thing about the march, it was pretty well organised. They did have a march committee, and the march committee's job was basically to decide, you know, how far we were. You know, they they had a map planned out. They'd already gone ahead and you know, checked out my eyes. So every day, you know, we knew uh, where we were going. Uh, you know, so you know, this day we go here to there, whatever. And 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 they would have uh, also worked out how far it was from one marae to the next or from where we were staying. And so they would split, they used to split the, uh, uh, the marches into three groups and they would drop the marches that, you know, if we had 60 Ks to do on a day, they would uh, start one group from the marae where we were, one group 20, 20 Ks up the road and another group 40 Ks up the road. 
and then the bus that dropped those ones up would come back to the first group, pick them up, and go back down, pick up the second group. And hopefully by the time we got to the next marae, the third group had arrived at the marae 20 things before. So um, they had, uh, so every night the, the march committee would have a hui, decide what we were doing and everything was sussed out for the next day. And they would have uh, marshals, you know, people that were in charge of keeping people safe, they were keeping people off the road and making sure people didn't get run over by cars. They had cars in front and cars behind with, with uh, signs on to keep people safe. Um, but, you know, one of the things that would happen is when we got to some of those towns, you know, whether it was Kaitai or Kai, oh, not so much Kai, we did go in there. Um, we would go through the walk through the streets in the middle of town and people would join us. And they'd join us, walk through the, through the town with us, and they probably would walk to the Marae if it wasn't too far. But what a lot of them did, you know, in that short time that they'd spent, they joined the march, um, they caught a vision. You know, and a lot of them would shoot home, grab their gears, and next minute we had more people on the march. So people were just coming for a little march through their, their part of the country or their town. And then they would catch a vision, go home, pack the gears. And that's how we picked up quite a few other marches from the land march. So that was great. But it was well organized. The only thing that wasn't so, the other thing that was happening though, is that uh, there was another march committee. And that march committee was run by, the, so they had official march committee organizing the march. And then we had another committee behind, which was controlled by Finna, and she was just making sure that she controlled all the money. So, you know, any money that came in, you know, Finna would control that. So the March Committee had no control of the finances. Well, as far as I know, the March Committee, I, I, there was a, we had our treasurer for the March Committee, but I think most of the money was going to the other committee. Yeah. So that was a committee that um, yeah. Finna had set up for herself. But, you know, yeah. that we would worry about. Our main job was being marshals keeping people safe when they were march. Yeah. Was there well, ever any, 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 oh, sorry, Dad, you go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I do know that um, there, there, there was, there was a couple, there were some factions internally what's happening yes. with, there was Finna. Uh, Finna yes. always wanted to, to, to control the boo there. Because I think at the, yes. at, at the, at the end of the march, we, they, they had a surplus of $60,000. And uh, so yes. that, that was a big debate and argument. So, so you, you have two factions. So there's the Finna Cooper faction, Te Matakite o Aotearoa, and, uh, and yep. the, or the, the Matakite, or the Matakite, there was the two groups. And the other one was, uh, um, I think, was facilitated by uh, um, the Dr. Do Sinclair. Dr. Sinclair. Dr. Sinclair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and Tom Puata, and uh, and so yes. they did end up in the, after the march, and after the they march, had a in Ruatuki, eh? yeah, yeah, they came to Ruatuki. Yeah, they had my well, uncle group by Magadi. Was that Dr. Sinclair or Finna? Finna, no, Finna. And, uh, oh, and, Finna and, and Dr. Sinclair was in uh, Mangere Bridge, Marae. And so there oh, was two, okay. two yes. meetings happening at the same oh, time. Oh, on the same weekend? Yeah. Yeah, I was uh, I was up at that one at Mangere Bridge at um, Mata. Is it Mata to Marae? That Marae there? Over oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I, I was the yeah, I was a spy and informer for that group and checking <laughs> out what's happening down at the Ruatoki. So I go and use uh, yeah. use um, the 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 uh, phone. We only had two two phones in in Te Rewa Rewa where I was, and so I oh, uh, really? I gave her some money and making phone call to the Marae. And I remember passing yes. and telling them what's going on over here, over here, Yes, yes. Yeah, that, that, was my, that was my role. I was a spy. <laughs> For the other group, yeah, yeah. I was in was it, was it hard to, you know, do you think, you, you mentioned there's people coming on to the, um, you yeah, know, onto the march. Yep. There's a there's a there's a structure that's in there. I've, I've always found this pretty fascinating with with things like occupations, um, not just here, but there's also uh, I'd had some some friends who went over to uh, America for the um, the pipeline protest. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was yeah. that in North Dakota or South Dakota? Yeah, that's South Dakota. Yeah, yeah that's Standing right. Rock. And then, um, Standing Rock. Thank you, bro. Mm. Yeah. So they went over to that, and they just mentioned, you know, because there was a, a convergence of. Uh, of you know thousands and thousands of of non-indigenous um, 
protesters who showed up and um and it became quite uh, a problem i think problematic for them to manage the, the amount of people that were they're coming in to show support but then you know there's also have some the feeling that they're just yeah just coming yeah, well, to the, be part the same thing happened the same thing happened uh, way there on that match we did from Auckland for the Sacred Run. Yes, I remember. Remember yeah. those Aussies there, the Aussie woman there? I mean, With uh, Bank. They were all there running up the front and I thought, hey, this place been ditching this cope up and you got all these parky people, you know, running up the front marching lay and I'm thinking, well, oh, yeah, they just don't know when to hang back and, you know, and play a role. But, uh, you know, those are, yeah, that that was a real issue that was happening as you know some of those behaviors of some of those aussies that uh, i can't remember the guy what is his name dennis was it dennis, dennis banks. banks yeah dennis, dennis banks. banks in uh, uh anishinaabe yeah, yeah 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 and so, so and so uh, in terms of the organization though in terms of those committees that were running was it over in uh, south dakota oh no no sorry it just in your you know in the like for example you mentioned that people would come on you hit a town They'd, uh, they'd, they'd walk for a little bit, then they'd shoot home, get their stuff, and join the march. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and um, you know, was it was it easy to bring them, to onboard them, to get them to understand the tikanga of the of the march? And was it clear for them who the leaders were and, and sort of how it all worked? Uh, yeah, I think I think that was one thing. Certainly when they're on the road, they were clear that, you know, they knew there were marshals were in charge when they were on the road. So there wasn't, uh, and there wasn't a lot of, well, I don't recall many conflicts happening on the road although sometimes you know there was and if there were conflicts they would usually involve non-indigenous people but right. we had one guy there that was a um i'm not sure with his yeah yeah what he was but uh, they just call him the knife man because you know he'd be walk around and have his knife with him and i just and he had long tall got blonde hair beard and i thought you know and they used to call him that because he always came this night and i thought so you got a lot of sort of different oddballs that you weren't sure why they were there or how they got there. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I think that when we had the three day, the three day noho when the march arrived there in in uh, Purirua, and yes. then all uh, all the gear meat workers they supply all the meat, and all the divers from uh, from Wellington when they dive for all the kidna, uh, yes. the crayfish and all, all the laborers and then they they use all their work machinery to to make a honey because they were feeding 20,000 people uh you know 20,000 people and then all around in wellington and um yeah. remember that yeah and i can remember you know even on the wharves the fellas the wharfies down the wharf they had cleared out some of their work sheds and we're cooking in there and they were hosting feeding and hosting people and allowing them to sleep there i think they must have been i didn't actually go and see what was happening on the wharf but i know that the wharfies certainly made available so you know i think a lot of people caught a vision a lot of our uh, you know my uncle was one of them uh, my father's brother that uh, that lives in Tidai bay so much so that he did i go with him I went with her, a fellow named Clem, Clem Huriwaka, and my uncle, who lived in Wellington. We and I, I went with them to some. That might have been the hui I went with them to up in um, Mangere. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I went with them. So they, you know, so there were some other people that that uh, you know. And when I went on the land march, uh, I didn't have any money. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. I was working before I went, but I quit my job, and. Um, Oh, that's right. I ring you up, eh, Tommy, to give yeah. me a number of ride out to do all the two <laughs> crazy work. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. when, um, no, when we were when we when we were on the march, we got to Orewa, coming down the Motu. When we got there, we heard that uh, Sid Jackson's father had passed away. That's right. And so right. we borrowed a car from somewhere in Auckland. Don't know who. So me, Ama, Tiata. And Lynn, Lynn, I can't remember. Uh, Lynn, uh, Doherty. Dawson. Dawson was on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Doherty. Linda, yeah. Doherty. Lynn Doherty. We jumped in a car and took off down to the um, Tangi. And on the way down, we got a flat tyre. Well, we fixed that flat tyre. Yeah, and you fall into my place in uh, back, Hamilton. We got another flat tyre, so we end up, you know, stuck at uh, just outside Tukuroa, near Kinley, near the Kinley turn off. There's a golf club along there and we got stuck there and 
Amr and I were sitting there and it was about two o'clock in the morning. We thought, hey, this is crazy. He said, here, just wait till daylight. There's seven, eight, nine o'clock so we can go and find another car. So Amr and I decided to jump out and hitchhike. And that's yeah. how we, you know, and we jumped out. And well, we happened to catch this uh, father and mother that were going to Hamilton. They'd been down to Wellington to pick up their daughter. She was at uni down south. And they drove down to Wellington to pick her up off the ferry in the middle of the night. Or well, might have been nine o'clock at night because they arrived up. They picked us up at a Tokoroa about, ooh, must have been close to five o'clock in the morning. And we got there and I went up to the hospital where my where my sister worked. She worked in the, the Waikato Hospital in um, uh, the casualty, in that casualty place. And I got her to ring you, Tommy, and you come and picked up Amar and I and drove us out to Hodotu and dropped yeah, us off to right. Hodotu. And we managed to carry on hitchhiking. Yeah, and we right. actually got right across to the other side of the Auckland Harbour Bridge before the march left to come over the Auckland Harbour Bridge. So that was a great, uh, that was great that we got there in time to do that. I thought, man, that was a, but it was a bit scary to go over that bridge. Oh, and yeah. The whole spans on the bridge were going boom, boom. Boom, and you know, and because it was swaying so much, people were starting to fall over and people were starting to panic. And uh, there was a fellow from Ngati Way. What the hell's his name? Witty McMahon. Yeah. Witty McMahon. He just went there, put his hand up, went through, stopped it, everybody. And uh, when everybody stopped, the bridge stopped swaying. And then Witty moved everybody off in little groups of about five or six hundred at a time. And that was safer. Then he'd take one group off, then the next group would go. And that's how the, they managed to stop that bloody um, Auckland Sway. Harbour Bridge swaying so badly. Yeah, wow. doing that. Boom, boom, boom. One whole span swaying and smashing against the other span. And a lot of um, older people, I was only 25 then, were starting to panic and couldn't keep their, their, their feet properly. So, you know, that was a bit scary, but I thought Witty McMath did really well stopping the march and putting taking people off in small groups of five or six hundred at a time it was well nice. um thank you Matua, for for coming on and uh and yeah. having a call it all with us Are we yeah, going, we'll, it's um it's it's good to have uh you know get the the stories from you it's from you old fellas and uh see what's your memory's pretty good yeah 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 <laughs> still pretty <laughs> solid there uh uncle <laughs> <laughs> we, you still um, got it yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, dead so now me it all with it. Hey, come by. Yeah, we'll catch up with you when I come down that way soon. Yeah. Come by, come on, I look forward to it, Tom. You got okay. my number eight. Yep. Yeah. 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 See you what it is. Kia ora, kia ora, yeah. Thank you, mate. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. Hey, then I'll go to Yeah, yeah, oh well. Yeah, now that was good. Hey, how do I get rid of this tree? <laughs> yeah, leave down there. Okay. You can remember the stories, can't figure out how to come off Zoom. Hooray! Yeah. <laughs> I managed to leave. <laughs> oh, uh, not quite. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to remove you. I'll get out of the way. I'll and I, I won't report you to Zoom. Hang on. Oh, okay, I keep there. There <laughs> There he is. Oh. Okay, we've, we've got Tina here. So Tina's uh, just, just hit the waiting room, so I'll bring her in. Okay. Oh, you got all dressed up for us, sis. You're beautiful. <laughs> hey. Kia ora. Kia ora, kia ora. Cheer. Man, that's a mean hairdo. Well, you know. Give, it, uh, give us a profile. Like I can't, can't see that. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 that's how it is. It gets. That's as high as it gets. I'm in fine company, you know. I can't just be wrong. Can I see your old pal? Kia ora, yeah, kia ora. Yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for coming yeah. along. Good to have you with us. We were just catching up for uh, uh, the old... Uh, the old war stories from back in the day with uh, Uncle Rawiri Rudu and Dad, they were uh, reminiscing about all of the uh, the actions of the land march and the twos of toing and froing. You know, because the thing is, back then, they, I, I'm just amazed because, you know, Dad was talking about having to give the old lady at, at, at Te Rewere or Marae because there was only two phones 
in Te Rewa Rewa, so in our area in South of Ruatuki, let alone not having cell phones or or social media or you know Telegram or any other way that people organise protests and stuff these days, they had nothing. Dad was all uh, just all oh, what's happening with that camera. Um, he was having to make a toll call, and I just remembered, geez, that's right. You used to have to make, you used to have to pay to call Auckland yeah, 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 back yeah. in the day. I totally well, what are what are you? Yeah, yeah, and uh, it was a party line. The trouble is when you're party, party line, line. The, at Ruatuki, everybody knows, and uh, there's a few years listening in what's going on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I I had some money, so I, I set aside some money to pay the people if I can use their phone. But uh, most of the time, they take the bike. You can use your phone, you know. And uh, so, so uh, you know, two weeks later, I turn up with a bag of mussels or something, or a fish or something. That's how we kind of navigate ourselves to uh, to use the technology that was available at that time. So uh, that's that's really my role. I have done a lot of that, a lot of that stuff there. Because I, I committed all of us, that there was a, just a handful of us was able to, to move around, you know, nationally. And moving from Tamaki Makaro to Pornike to Christchurch. And I, I, I think I did that most of my life. And um, yeah, really interesting time. Because uh, there need to be some co cohesive kind of movements. And a, a lot of that stuff there, we, we didn't have the technology what you have today. So I made myself available. So all of that is kind of get there. So you you had to be seen and have a chat, building your network, and uh, and having conversation with people in each of those different areas, and uh, and that's 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 really how we move people um, uh, to participate in um, not one more acre, whether it be the anti-war stuff or whether it be the um, um, you know, the cope of, uh, cope of Māori or Te Reo, we want to have a voice and all of that, yeah. But but it we, we, you know, but here we are, we're doing it here, and we're having a conversation here live, you know, and... Hoi anō, e mihi tēnei kia koe, sis. Thank you for coming on. Kei a koe. Oh, kei whare kahika, kei te kainga ki whare kahika. Oh, oh, oh wow. mo tēnei wā, e arā. Oh, I never stray too far from home these days. You mm. used to be missioning all over the place back in the rā, but these all for the last few years, man, going to Tūranga is a big deal. Going, aye, going aye, to Gizzi is a big deal now. <laughs> I think, actually, I think the last time I left um, my home was to go to Rotorua and we had dinner together, Matua. That was oh. the last time. I left. Oh, did I we? Left my when oh. we were in Rotorua and Whakareorewa. That was the last time I left um, Whairawhiti. Other than that, I've been here because wow. I've just been, I, you know, just preparing for COVID, supporting our whanau to get ready for COVID. And um, yeah, it's just consumed everything. And, and I don't want to travel because I don't, because, you know, it's just not safe for our community. So, um, yeah, we've just been hunkering down at home. Biggest, the furthest we go is to, is to Tūranga. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's a real consideration for you fellas who are really in the WAPs. We kind of think we're in the WAPs here in Ruatuki, but we got Whakatani about 15 minutes yeah. away, really. And But with you fellas, your closest kind of hospital is, is how far away? Yeah. Gizzy. It's a, it's a three hour drive if you're in your car leaving yeah. from here, but for people who get very very sick um from COVID, it's a, it's five hours because if you want an ambulance by the time you get an ambulance from here for the kahika out to the back of waikura valley where some of our most distant whanau stay and you stabilize them out at waikura to get onto the ambulance and then you go to te Puyo to change over to the town ambulance because they don't have the one ambulance to take you all the way so you, they, they stabilize you at the hospital and then you go to Gisborne in the town ambulance. You're looking at a five hour ambulance trip to hospital. Wow. Mm. So it's pretty fast. So that's why we have to, like, we, we're really, um, we, we try to be as preventative as possible. That's why we're, we're super cautious. That's why one of the reasons why we put up checkpoints, but also why we put so much work into prevention is. Um, because our chances of getting to decent health care are fast enough because, you know, COVID, you can go down quite fast. Um, yeah. 
So the chances of getting to decent health care if you start to have a dip like that is, is pretty slim. But, you know, there's the other things that we rely on, like our, our own kotahitanga, our own response, looking after each other as whānau and hapu. You know, we've, we've had to really work hard on that too. There's a little bit of, you know, why I'm worried about what's happening out there politically is because it does impact on our kotahitanga. That's one of the main tools in our toolkit to look after each other and survive in areas like this. So, you know, our kotahitanga and our whanaungatanga is pivotal to survival in, in places like ours. Mm. And it's understandable when you look at it from that perspective, it's really understandable uh, the approach that you've taken. And because you have been vocal around being prepared, about being cautious, about, and it's not about yourself and your own you know, freedoms, but it's about your your community and keeping your karawakuya safe and your mokopuna safe. Um, but when you are vocal these days about uh, you know about COVID and about being cautious and taking those those steps to protect your your community. You, you uh, you've been uh, subject to a bit of a tech asus. Yeah, well, we've never had our freedom anyway, have we? Yeah, nah. <laughs> you know, it's not like it's a we had much thing. to lose. <laughs> it's all relative, exactly. It's not like we had a whole, <laughs> you know, and and, um, and so. I th- that, that's one of the core cool signs, I think, for um, for you know some of the rhetoric that's going around that it's not actually our rhetoric because for us, you know, the system has never been safe anyway. It's never been made for us anyway. We've never had all of our rights in place anyway, and and so it's not that's not anything particularly new for for us. So to pretend that that is the crisis that's in front of us like it wasn't there last year or the year before that or the year before that mm. to me that says oh did you only just lose your rights mm. <laughs> so so where are you coming from and, and well, that's, that's me actually, a little bit of a, a sign yeah well because that, that that is something that i've uh, i was listening on uh, one of the mainstream media sort of channels i think it was radio new zealand today and uh somebody was saying actually a number of the people that they were interviewing were saying this is the first time that they had come out they were trying to I guess position themselves. There's a lot of people who, you know, they were, I think they're calling themselves soccer moms. And you were like, like average Kiwi soccer <laughs> moms, and and this is the first time I've ever come out and protested. And it's, I, I don't know, you know, you hear people like Russell Coots, and he's saying this is the first time he's ever come out and, and protested. And it's kind of, um, for me, a tohu he tohu tera that uh, this is the first time that they've had their rights impinged upon and so they're like freaking out. What do you mean I'm not allowed to go and da 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 Whereas, like you said, for our communities, hey, it's old news. It's old news not to have those uh, those uh, rights and privileges for our communities. Access to health, access to education. Uh, it's interesting oh, though. But it's, hmm. Yeah, it's, it, I, I just, I'm interested in what you guys might think here because it, the, the thing that I've been struggling with is some of the um i guess because you know we've been getting a lot of stuff uh through dad um and just kind of processing it a lot of it's quite full-on and intense some of it is just like straight up hardcore you know sell out plastic maori tamir tamir and and all of that kind of stuff that kind of comes out and then um when the question of freedom comes up um it's always a bit tricky to kind of uh locate what it is that people are talking about when they talk about freedom and 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 even if that is the issue we're not uh, sometimes people are saying to us we're not talking about freedom i'm like oh okay all right well so then um that's not what we're seeing on you know the placards and stuff like that but okay but what, the the problem i'm the, the issue that i'm kind of trying to to figure out is the the difference between privilege and freedom and and where this um, there seems to be like, you know, they're talking about freedom to go to the gym, freedom yes. to go get coffee, freedom yes. to, uh, you know, which is different dad to the freedoms that I think you guys were talking about in your day, which was, you know, to freedom be able to speak to your speak, language, yeah. to speak your language, yeah. you know, to exist 
as yes. a you know in, in the anti-apartheid movements that were going on freedom to uh yeah. to, to you know to to be equal with uh white men or uh, white people uh or the civil rights movement or anti uh the the um anti-vietnam freedom to not go and get killed that kind of thing so and, and there just seems to be quite a a difference in the type of freedom that we're talking about today which is actually more about privilege than it is about actually truly freedoms that we with that I, I don't know and I, I maybe what what is it today if we were to use the measure of the freedoms that you were fighting for back in uh in 50 years ago dad what are those freedom um things that we're talking about today what's actually a freedom cause today yeah yeah uh, for maori for maori and then i mean if you're talking about kotahi tanga uh you know that, that there's these these things where you're 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 creating um where you're creating a situation that you're you're, you're um protecting your community through the the actions that you guys that you guys are performing in your local area yeah. right and so these are the these are the true actions that you're taking to to ensure that your um whanau, uh, are all safe uh, some of them might be vaccinated some might not, might be not that's not the issue here it's about yeah, making yeah, sure yeah. they're safe yeah well i, I think i think um, just just uh, kind of quickly there uh, some some of the challenge and the widow that we had there uh, particularly the 1967 amendment act uh, that was an act uh, that uh, undermined maori that they couldn't build houses on their own land on their own fenua and uh, because of multiple owners so there, there was a challenge in, and particularly a lot of those um government policy you know, was um, the, some of those policy with um, uh, creating obstacles that prevent us to do the things that we need to do as a Tano and and, and, um, and others. so there was a whole lot of that there were other people who who had some a bit of knowledge than, than some of us who, who had some ideas or so let's look at the, the government policy around them so they, those are some of the challenges. I mean, just the basic fundamental things about the real. The real was not a plan. It was not in the system. And so there, there was more calling around for the, for our old te reo to learn about the Japanese language uh, because it made money. And so they didn't see the purpose and the reason that the why the real. So they, they almost wanted to kind of get rid of it. So that that was really. A quite a radical thing for us here just to go and march and go on the street and march for the real and uh, and do that or we take some kind of action there we we make all the maori mata in our wakato and uh, for people like myself uh we call it all you know so and that, that was pretty radical thing back in those days just to just to do those sort of simple actions to have a voice, they don't know here to what that they do, and um, and they, even their own people kind of believe that because they follow the up in the nata corner, you know, get get mau tata ki what that they chika na ina ni kawa that they me fight that they ki te ki te ao pa ke ha, you know that 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 kind of corner. So 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 there was a, a a lot of those little kind of conversation where we having debate with ourselves around that. You know, and, uh, and because a lot of our parents and uh, that general were a little bit mataku, they didn't really want to, to rock the boat. And uh, so all of a sudden, and he this young whakaputa mo here, and uh, uh, young, young Maori men and women of that time. And uh, so that was really quite a, a, big, a big step there for, for us to, uh, to, 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 to have those voices, uh, I guess. Yeah, I forgot. Well, you know, uh, oh, well, I was just going to say, like, um, it's just, it's so, it's massive just hearing those, um, your kōrero matua, and I, you know, you can't help but reflect that this is a part of the whakapapa of our tradition of, you know, um, Porotehe and, and hikoi and all, all of the different ways that we've expressed ourselves politically that has its own whakapapa that's been built on by generation after generation and we have our matua 
in that space and our people and our leadership and the tikanga that's been built through that experience as well like our collective experience of going to these places either whether it's you know other places internationally or nationally or all of that but you know there's there's a, a legacy that's gone from generation to generation whether we're talking about the generation that was pulling up the survey pigs at Parihaka or the generation that was you know during the land wars or the generation of of the land marches or the or the anti nuclear marches or the climate change um or TPPO or Fosho and Sibe Takutai marches all of that is a part of like you know this amazing legacy that's been passed forward to us and I'm always really conscious of that when we go into spaces that we are we're carrying a legacy that people have put their stories and it's a continuation of a story I and how are we going to continue that story in our generation in a way that continues from the mana that's been brought to it before and the energy and the sweat and the tears and everything that's been brought to it before us how are we going to reflect that and how we conduct ourselves when we take our political mama somewhere as well and a voice one of the most powerful things that's ever been said to me because i i get it i get the confusion and the and the hurt and the mama and you don't know what to do what's the right thing to do sometimes and you feel oh this is it this is where we make our final stand and we've got to do it it's now or never i've had so many now or never moments uh over the years and i just remember one time you know our beautiful matua moana jackson just said to me i was like i don't know what to do <laughs> and he goes keep our people safe yeah number one keep our people safe that's the first thing on everything else will flow from that so long as you keep our people safe and i trust you to do that and i and i just always come back to that but you know i'm always mindful just you know listening to your beautiful corridor and the experiences that you've had that we have responsibilities to carry that legacy on and you are mm-hmm. carrying out that that responsibility in the mahi that you're doing cuz you know in the in the current kind of social media atmosphere it's, it's it's not the popular thing to stay home and look after your your crow your community it's actually a popular thing to head down to Wellington at the moment and uh um you know voice now or never freedom um but actually like you said keeping your community safe is uh, a huge mahi so mihi tēnā kia koe just for that and it's kind of like I said before earlier it's, it's actually coming with a burden this the, the one thing I find with the the current situation like why did he said earlier uh is the vehement vitriol that's coming towards a number of us like uh, n- not once during any of this uh corridor that we've had because we've been very open that dad's been vaccinated and uh he hasn't been paid off to do that that's a choice that we that we made um for his health he has you know uh certain health issues that he, he needs to think about these things and we want him to be around um and we've looked at the information and we've made that decision for ourselves um and and being able to talk about that openly um around that decision there's been a lot of really personal um attacks that people have have thrown his way i mean he's got big enough shoulders as he kind of just shrugs it off but there you goes um you know the fact that people <laughs> feel entitled to personally attack because not once, you know, like we said, actually, we've got a lot of whanau who are down in Wellington. We sort of like chuckle about them. We're oh, yeah, nah, they're down there doing their thing. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. You know, because they make that choice to do that. And we still love them because they're still whanau. You know, we might go, mm, you know. And they'll get good. Yeah, yeah. We, we might have different opinions about some of the mm-hmm. things that are going on down there. But those are, are our opinions. Yeah. Um, I, I find it hard to believe that people think that this is about money. And not actually about a, a, a real issue, and you know, uh, information uh, and disinformation, misinformation, and some of the more nefarious uh, political actors and act- actions that are at play internationally. Um, we see those things, and so we go, "Me too, pato, o te ra fkaro, o te ra hikoi." But um, still, we give them the respect that they are allowed to go and take that action. Um, it doesn't seem to be cutting both the other way. We sort of are open and about our choices, and oh well, you get run down and attacked for it. 
and I know that's kind of been the case for you too, Asus. You know, people a bit uh, attacky, attacky, attacky. Yeah. Yes, people a bit attacky. Uh, <laughs> they are a bit attacky at the moment. But also, you know, um, if I, and I try to think about, I do try to think about, you know, how they're experiencing all of this. And for many of our whanau, what I do hear is that for many of our whanau, they don't, they don't feel that they have as much choice because of the mandates. Mm. You know, they feel that the mandate has taken their choice away. Mm. So, you know, that, and that their choice hasn't been respected because their choice comes with consequences mm. mm -hmm. um, around their ability to provide for themselves. And, and that gets capitalized upon by the people who have another agenda who yeah. do want to sow division. And they say, yes, that's right. You know, they don't care about you. Nobody's going to look after you. They're trying you to control you. They're trying to. But we, they, yes. And, but we're here for you. We will be your new far. No, we will mm. be the ones to. And so they will try to capitalize upon that to recruit, to recruit people through their mamai. And they stoke that mamai. And that's why. That, in my observation anyway, that's why we see people getting so upset because that mamai is being stoked by others and, and so that's, that's they get caught up in a space where it can get quite vehement as, you, as you've said. Because in, think... in my head, the mandates will, they'll go. Once, once the, yes. the, the danger's gone, once this, this next peak goes, people will start to be able to, you know, and, and this is the thing as they complain about mainstream media i was listening to radio new zealand today the pressure is on jacinda and her government to make that call it's coming from the act party and david seymour those numbers were a little bit off but there is pressure being applied because it cannot be a permanent thing it's a temporary measure for the health and safety of the majority and consider taking into consideration the capacity and capability of our health system that's why they were put into place did they get it completely right? Oh, that could be argued, but I do know that yeah. they are temporary. That those, uh, you know, no jab, no job measures that are currently in place around education, health, police. There may be some sectors that are that they are still there. Possibly, probably around health. I would say if you're a nurse, you probably have to be vaccinated. But teachers, I think that'll probably come down. Certainly, you know, going to the gym, getting your hair cut vaccine passes i think those those vaccine passports i think they'll be a thing of the past once we once covid becomes endemic and it's just part of and they make that call so it's a temporary thing and i just wonder how this protest will go yeah. once the mandates are dropped once the passports are gone and whether or not the protesters will think that's because that they applied their pressure or actually that was actually what was going to happen all along well, it, it is, you know, while we're still in the situation where COVID, you know, COVID hasn't peaked yet and it's, and particularly Omicron's going to hit, it's a bit of a zero sum game as well. So if they lift the mandates, that's going to take freedom, particular freedoms away from other people. And an example of that is, you know, you have Fano, I have Fano who are immunocompromised. They are, and people that I love very dearly who are on, you know, chemotherapy and, you know, so they, you, you you lift the mandates and there's no checks and balances in place for people who have chosen to not vaccinate and no it doesn't it doesn't 100 it doesn't provide 100 percent protection but it does lower the risk it lowers the risk and so for people who are very sick you know i know i know far no i have people and friends over in for instance the uk they have not left their house for two years in mind me not leaving tight after they haven't left their house for two years. They've had everything delivered for two years. They're basically living in a prison. It's like home detention of sorts because it's not safe for them to leave. And so, you know, the mandates uh, create some safe spaces for whānau who have their health compromised or, or for children who are not old enough to be vaccinated yet. You know, our very young children who are not old enough to be vaccinated yet you take the mandates away then you're taking freedom away from those people who don't literally don't have a choice so other people have exercised their choice hate the play that's their right they've exercised their choice they have privilege and that they had a choice 
There are other people like our babies and our immunocompromised who don't have that choice. And they will be forced into a kind of home detention and they will have their freedom taken away. So when you, you know, for me, when I think about it that way, I just think, well, you've, that, that's a form of privilege, even though I know you feel that you've had your privileges taken away, but you actually had the privilege of choice in the first place. You would like to exercise or abuse that privilege of choice by taking other people's freedom away who don't have that privilege and don't have that choice as well by removing the mandates before their time. And they are going, that's the other thing, is that it's an inconvenience with a time frame. Nobody's ever said, not even Prime Minister has ever said that they're there forever. They're there to get us through a particular phase of dealing with the pandemic. So when you add that to it, then you're saying, well, actually, who you want to abuse your privilege of having a choice that other people don't have and have them be imprisoned because you don't want to make that choice, you know. And, and <coughs> you know, on, on top of that as well, it's only actually temporary. It's not permanent anyway. But if yeah. they, obviously, if they die, it's permanent and the damage that could be done to them is permanent. So the, the rights discourse, uh, you know, I, I understand what they're saying. I understand where people are coming from when they say they feel that it's a, that it's a, an abuse of rights. But when I think about our whānau whaikaha in particular, and they've been so vocal through all of this to take into consideration the rights of our disabled whānau, our whānau whaikaha, yeah. our immunocompromised whānau, and our whānau who can't, our children who can't vaccinate. We, we have to, if we're not thinking of our most vulnerable, in our communities, what kind of kaitiki are we? What kind of rangatira are we? If we're not looking after our most vulnerable, who are our whānau whaikaha and our babies, and, and, and our, you know, our pakiki as well. Mm. Kia ora, sis. That's why I, um, you know, enjoy your conversation because it's well considered. You know, you thought, you thought through these things and, and, and you got to look at these things from a lot of different angles and it's not just about selling out or, or, or bloody towing the party line, you know, you're stooges for the government. It's like, actually, you know, these are complex things that you really need to think about. And of course, there's a lot of emotion involved, but there's a lot of factors and considerations that need to be taken into account, especially when you're making public health policy. You, you're rolling this stuff across the country. It's not like you're just looking talking about one you know, small community, you're talking about the entire uh, nation. Like you said, there's, you know, a lot of um, immune compromise. I've got friends who are immune compromised who will not come out of their house because they, if, if they yeah. get it, they're dead. They got lupus, yeah, so do, you know, it's like they have to... That's, do you think that that's, you know, and I guess that, that uh, you know, that, that position, which is, um, well, we're going to, we're going to go out, you know, it, it it's, fuels the COVID denial, the vaccine denial, where it's like, oh, it's not, it's not a real thing. Those people don't, those people aren't, um, you know, uh, what's the term you're using? Um, compromised. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a hoax from the government, you know, where it, it kind of starts to, it, it starts to kind of grow out of that thing where, where it is actually, if we all take responsibility and we all play our part, Okay, that's one. That's one uh, sort of uh, part of the conversation. Um, but then taking on that responsibility feels like it's too much of an inconvenience, or it's, or all their belief system doesn't. You know, they're not prepared to do that, and so they would rather deny that it exists at all, or that the vaccine even works. And so, um, and then, and then tie it then to the fact that the government is trying to take control of our lives and then so it grows and grows and grows so that's um um yeah i don't know if if that's you know once you hit a certain level of you know trying to explain the reason of you know even from our perspective which is it's pretty you know it's pretty clear and it's pretty simple it's not about uh, towing the, uh, the the government line just because dad was vaccinated or we've all been vaccinated it's not because we you know we're propagating uh or you know or being getting in bed with the government yet that's because we're not in the same places uh, as other people on the issue that's what they're basically implying oh well you got it so then you must be propagating that there is a there is a um, pandemic and that's you know 
there is a um, that the vaccine is going to work, and then it starts to get pretty gnarly around some of the accusations. It's, um, it's difficult yeah. to have a conversation with, with COVID deniers. Full stop. It is. Yeah. It's really difficult if they're saying actually it's all a scam for the government to control. What do you do with that? How, how do you have a conversation if they, if they you, believe that? So, <clears throat> have you ever tried to hold a surprise party for someone? <laughs> yeah, it's the I hardest haven't complete thing. failed. <laughs> it's the hardest thing to get everybody to keep a secret, eh? Like, it's just, it's, it, it's really yeah. difficult just to throw a surprise party in your world, especially in a community like ours where everybody's up in each other's boo poo. But, you know, it, in general, it's hard to hold, to get people to keep a secret. I just think, you know, um, uh, I don't mean to oversimplify it. It's a deeply complex issue, but I know one thing. Everything's been, you know, we, we haven't been given the opportunity to sit down with each other. Some of that's COVID, but also some of it's the way that the government has controlled the response to have some of the deep discussions around simple concepts like who do you trust and why do you trust them yeah. and you know what's a trusted source of information for us in Te Māori and what's the role of our marae and our pakeke and, our, and what's the role of wānanga in that and how can we continue these things in spaces of COVID and whatnot and so you know for us we, we need to have some of those real basic discussions um Still, I think still now it's it's valuable for us to have some of those real basic discussions because, um, you know, it's just been assumed that we would trust the government that's been hell bent on eradicating us for what a couple of hundred years. They've they've made a whole lot of policies around us trusting them, and actually, for a good portion of our history, our survival has depended upon challenging their narratives mm -hmm. and pushing back on their narratives mm -hmm. and suggesting that there is another narrative and fighting to have that other narrative and that other way of being, you know, valued and respected. Um, and so all of a sudden we have to turn that on our head and trust the government. It's not as simple as that. So, that, you know, there's some real valid concerns and discussions to be had in that space but that's one, one of the things that I when we do have the time to have that conversation and if we can have that conversation before we get too polarized polarized into our corners is to you know say okay so who would need to be involved in that conspiracy to make that happen all of the media including Maori media the and, whole health you know, system like, the, all the of the bureaucrats all of everybody all, all of the nurses and the health system's been opened up to, to vaccinators, community vaccinators. So all of the community vaccinators, you know, like that that would be, I think that's the huge, that's a massive conspiracy. That's a massive amount of people to keep a secret mm. like that. It's to an exorbitant off. amount. It's a, and, and I have to say for someone that's been involved in holding governments to account stuff like that for a little bit of time mm. here, nowhere near the amount of time of our present company, but for mm. a little bit of time, governments just aren't that smart. No, <laughs> officials aren't. Or they're organized. scrambling around. They're, they're not. They're scrambling <laughs> around trying to like push through these bright ideas that the latest politician has pushed through. I want reform in this and they have to write all of the new plans and yeah. they just don't have the time. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like it's like bringing mainstream media too, yeah, because yeah. newsrooms are underfunded. Yeah. That, like a lot of those reporters, yeah. it's just they're under such tight deadlines that um, yes. they just sometimes miss out a lot of information and reprint erroneous information. And it's just called bad reporting, and it's under tight deadlines. It's not some huge conspiracy. And a, conspiracy. Yeah. And yeah. And a crud system of high turnover of staff. All of those things, you know, like all of those things. You know that that. All of those things. So all I those boring things. The system is, <laughs> it is, it's boring. It's so the boring. The reality is much more, the reality is much more boring than that. Unfortunately, the system is just not sophisticated enough to be able to pull off, you know, and I'm just talking about that conspiracy. There yeah. are other, cons there are other, Oh, I, you know, the 5G one, the 5G conspiracy, the 5G conspiracy that came out. I was like, yeah. do you know how difficult 
it would be to go because I, I you know as a regional councillor we, we I'm part of a regulatory body and I sit there as a representative yeah. to ensure that nothing goes into the environment we take we don't take care of frequency and radiation and that kind but airspace but I just know there are so many steps you have to go through before you release something like that because if people started to get cancer you know the, the that whole thing is it, it does the, go into crazy territory and the truth is there are actually enough real conspiracies which is around institutionalized yes. racism that's come from the trajectory that's based on on white supremacy and, and um colonization and the that is still apparent discovery. and it, <laughs> yeah. that's right the doctrine of I discovery guess, and we still I think have to is, battle those narratives there's still a lot of work to do in that space that's so intrinsic within our culture and society without having to deal with all of this crazy kind of based on anti-semitic some semitic sorry anti-semitic kind of conspiracy it's nuts i think though, there, i think there is a difference between uh, uh it's it, conspiracy by design i would agree that's you know, that there's probably not much of that going on or you know, at least it's it's easy to spot but conspiracy by incompetence i think is is completely plausible oh, yeah, and right? trying to cover their asses oh my yeah, 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 a lot yeah. of that goes on and so i i think that there is you know because it's it's not you know commercial interests so yes it may not be governmental but it could be lobbying it could be sort of along the lines of those commercial interests and and the government just you know being incompetent so that those it allows those uh those those things to kind of punch through whether it's you know uh dulling down of regulatory uh to regulations those type of things you know and a government being kind of incompetent at, at that level and so um but not you know and that the design is coming from somewhere else is, is that there yes. are some smarter people out there than the governments that we've that we've um voted for um and um and then um that's actually what we're that that's the stuff that we need to watch out for conspiracy but, of incompetence yeah. that's that's nice i like that the i love that term the, consp <laughs> yeah, the conspiracy yeah. of incompetence but it's not i mean it's not that deep that's the thing like mm. the whole concept of deep state that's colonial like so you know when I, you go well what's deep state it's this idea that at a surface level everything is legit but if you dig deeper there's corruption hey for indigenous people the corruption has been right there on the Whole surface time. the hyper incarceration oh, yeah. has been right there on the surface the, time. you know the racism is right there on the surface for us and it's brutal and it's every day up in our faces there's nothing deep about the conspiracy you know about what we have to face so this whole idea of deep state that pretends that everything is legit on the surface it's never been legit on the surface for us that's how i know it's a colonizer or colonial concept deep state and and you're exactly right it's not even it's it, it, half the time it's just incompetence but often it's also just straight up racism and white supremacy that sits very close to the surface yeah but I will say this for for our society. I, I, I've got to say, since I've been sitting at the regional council table and, and I'm sitting across from councillors who come from co uh, communities that are, you know, they were raised and born inside of those communities and they have a right to exist. And, you know, and they have their whakaro and, and, and some of them can be a bit racist. Um, you know, the, the Hobson pledges and they make generalisations about us and so forth. But we... I have to say that the current, I guess, democratic system that we have allows for, I made a TikTok about this recently, I'm going to say it again, incremental policy development. Yes, <laughs> but I go, as boring as it bloody is, <laughs> that's the only way you can kind of, because you've got these tensions around... Um, interests so they've got their own community interests you've got your community interests and between the two communities you incrementally develop this policy and i've got to say that i've found certainly a shift the people who uh you know five years ago could have been boldly racist um are now fringe they got to watch what they say at the table. They have to be very careful because they will be marginalized. They will be pushed out to the and be seen as fringe. And that has been the incremental policy development over time. And I know people, a lot of people go, oh, we haven't got enough time. I'm like, well, if you just throw rocks at people's heads, you can't actually make that progress. And I know it's frustratingly and tediously slow, but I, I like, you know, 
I don't know how else to do it. If you think you can do better, come and sit at the table and figure out how to do it better. But it's, it is, it, it is the fairest kind of way forward. I, I, some, no one's come to me with an amazing idea that I've gone, yeah, that'll work. They haven't done it yet. So yeah. I'm like, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for this person to come to me without... Don't you think, though, that a big part of that also has been civil disobedience? Yeah, you know, like, it's a mix of both. Absolutely. You've got the ones who work on the inside, and, and you've got the civil disobedience as yeah. well. And they're, they're all... Like, you got the ones on the inside yes. doing that work yeah, on the yeah, inside. Yeah, 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 yeah. you got the ones on the outside pushing the boundaries and pushing the envelope and then be, and pushing for that policy development as well. It's the whole argument too that you you don't have a Martin Luther King without a Malcolm X. And dad back in the day was the Malcolm X. He was the tip of the spear. Yeah. And so they were like, oh, well, you can deal with that or you can deal with this more moderate one over here. But it all shifts it slowly. But at the same time, our democracy allows for that. And I've got to say, Jacinda's through the whole thing yeah, a lot of people are down on her at the moment, but I've got to say she has always said the right for people to protest. And she's also said through this whole thing with regards to the, the, the cops being kind of nicely, nicely about it all, is that they will not, as the government, step into operational matters with regards to the police. As the politicians, they constitutionally yeah. must keep it separate. And I respect that because there are so many uh, uh, administrations around the world who do step into that, who where the, the role of the governance, the politicians and the military or the police aren't separate enough. So I was really respectful of it's that a, with so regards to what dad, we have. Yeah, well, Muldoon did. It's a back in the day, Dad. Back had, in the day, it wasn't like that. Rob Muldoon, didn't you? <laughs> hmm. Yeah, Muldoon did. I mean, he just sick the police on you uh, any time. Oh, yeah, Muldoon did. And um, he did it to the uh, to, uh, best him point. Uh, he did it to um, he did it to um, get 81 tour, and he allowed all of that. Um, but but I, I I think there is um, no we, 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 we had to trust our beliefs and uh, and our cope and and uh, and our and our papa you know, and 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 uh, and I think that um, uh, we we don't totally had to go around what the park here think, but I think uh, how do we bring the uh, the way the into into our space. How, how can we bring that and become the part of the narrative? You know, and how how can we introduce that idea um, rather than just focusing on just the policy? What Toy is saying. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a great I'm a great believer that the um, the way the akai terea. So we can bring that in those in those conversations. And then what do that look like? You know, and how how can we paint that picture and, uh, and introduce and implement that and, and and to acknowledge that with respect. And so it's not uh, oh, the old Maori theater. And I think that um, that they, 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 they are a very intricate part of those kawa tikana or that I'm talking about. So we, we had to put that in. So, because if you don't have the, the, the understanding of the knowledge, so we just, we aren't just guessing, you know, and we just create something there. So, so we need to, to marry that and pull it together. What do they look like in 2022, I guess? And how, how can we put a policy around that? What's the cover around that? I guess. Mm. Other than having a co-mata to do your fight or do your way at that your in your in your in, in their space. It had to be something much deeper than that. Yeah, that's what that's why you're 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 a visionary, my father. That's a, that's that's visionary talk. That's not uh you know, bureaucratical speak. Yeah, 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 and and, and that's, uh, I, I mean, I, I had the whole, it's, it's, it's a breathing exercise for me to be, mm, you know, I, I hear you fellas talking about it, and uh, mm, it's all too, too small. We're not thinking lateral, we're not using, we're just thinking, you know, and, um, you know, I mean, it took me a hell of a long time even to try <coughs> to understand where the hell am I going, what the hell am I thinking. 
you know, so so we so we you bring people like um, Moana Jackson, Moana Moana Jackson, bring them in the space there. He, he had another another type of brain, you know, and so we can so we can if we can pull us together, and let, let's put nuts and bolts in it, and start screwing them in, you know, and start putting it together, and uh, so we, we we really need to to get into the nuts and bolts of things. We let's leave our emotion down back in the way. Let's leave our emotion down over here. Let's look at in our reality, you know. And because it's it's all in here. We 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 are we are part of all of that, of Tafiri Matia, of uh, Tangaroa. You know, we, it's it's not just something out there. You know, we we are part of that. That's what makes us. You know, and, um, and that's who we are. Our fucker papa, doi kai rako, kohi pi, you know, all of that. Where did that come from? It didn't just come from the sky. So, so you, you, you need to, you need to bring, bring an understanding of the real, of the language, I mean, what, the, what that language of the nehe nehe look like in the next 20 years, in the next thousand years, and all of that. And uh, how is Nazi pro thinking? We how do they see themselves, Nazi Pro Tana? What the Nazi Pro Tana going to look like in the next 50 years? Or in the next 100 years? What Tu Hui Tana going to look like? Is it going to be a Tamati cruiser? Is it going to be a Tamichi? Or is it going to be whoever? So we, so we need to have those sort of types of conversation. And, and, and so we can... That's why I like painting, because I can paint it. And, 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 and I can create it, I can paint it. So I'm in my, so I'm the ira ta, we're in a state of ira, ira atua tana. Ira tana ta, ira atua. So, uh, so we need to bring the ira atua and ira tana ta and, and pull that together. What do they look like? Tera whakaro tera. I hope it makes sense. Who's following that? <laughs> Anyone? It makes deep sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yeah, for <laughs> nah, that makes deep sense. That does make deep sense. Watch out, I'll start talking science fiction. Yeah, yeah. You know, it does, it does just really bug me out that we use iron inside of our bodies. And that iron was formed in a star that is now dead. Yeah. True story. What the yeah. fuck is that? And we get tied in with all of these little bureaucracies and stuff. And it's like, you it know. It's like a non sequitur, but. Uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> feels random. But We'd yeah. Be cooler, yeah. Hey, it's been beautiful to have you on, sis. Thank you for your, your kōrero, for your koha. Uh, it's always a pleasure to en- engage with you. Uh, and thank you for all of your mahi in the community. Uh, we had uh, someone on Twitch tonight say you know, let me see if I could find it they said thank you to you for posting uh, oh no it's gone now you posted a story I think about somebody who got COVID and actually had that person go and get their vaccine and so they were thanking you for that oh. yeah so that's um, uh, a wonderful outcome uh, for you know an action that you took so uh, thank you for joining us uh, we'll we'll uh, Thank you for dressing up as well, because you know clearly. We yeah, yeah, make, make us look so like total slouches. Jeez. So, yes. <laughs> Thanks for that, sis. Hey, look, when you've got nowhere to go and nobody to dress up for, this is a big night out. <laughs> hey, we'd, we'd love to have you back just to talk about other stuff as well, because it is really great to have. You know, it can be a bit of a, a sausage fest on here, just with the, all the dudes, and uh, it's nice to have that. Uh, that's um you know the, the wahine on to kind of add a different perspective to stuff as well because it's um yeah so yeah thank you for thank you for being here hi no fiti fifi no fiti fodore kia no ho tahi kia wānanga tahi kia kōrero tahi e pā na ki ngā taumaha o te ao kia Aye. hiki te taumaha te taumaha i rongi a i a tātou katoa nei rā tāmihi kia koutou kia ora e wā hei kona maori oro hei kona hei Hi. Mm. Hey, oh, great. Great. Good call, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. 
good to have um, thoughtful people on. Yeah, she I can string a sentence really together too, eh, old Tina? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it'd be really good for her to, to really to, 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 be, to talk about those constitutional stuff. And um, I think she'd be really involved with some of that uh, kōrero. And the kōrero that um, uh, Moana, Moana Jackson been uh, articulating for the last 40, 50 years. And mm. I, I think it be really, will be really great for, for her. In, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's another language altogether, but I, I think if we can pull it together, I, I think it'd be nice to have her back on the game. Yeah, we should um, put her socials up because she does a lot of TikToks actually. Okay. She does a lot of TikToks and. Um, okay. T. She is K O K A Korka. That's Auntie. Uh, Korka T. T T E E. Kokati. Oh, I think it's for Tina, but she oh, spelled it T E E. Okay, okay. Can okay. you put that in the. Uh, I don't know where we put that. I don't know. Yeah, no, I'll put it up. Well, can you just spell it again? At K O K A T double E. Kokati. Yeah. She, um. She, she's got a bit of a, like, um, not today colonizer kind of feel on her. On her, um. TikTok, yeah. she does. She does a lot of uh, reply videos to to replies from people who are getting a little bit upset at her kind of uh, white privilege or or white fragility. She she really hones in on that white fragility sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's also uh, Tina Ngata on uh, Instagram. Oh okay. Yeah, and yeah. she's uh, oh good. Yeah, that's her on. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, uh, that's kind of nearly us, eh? Yeah. Kia ora koto. There's a bit of discussion going on out there. But sorry uh, to ignore you a bit in the, uh, in the, in the comments. We have been watching you. Um, yeah, it's been good. Kia ora, Natalie. Kia ora, Nat. Kia ora, Nat. Good to see you out there. Sam bro's going off as usual. Kia ora, bro. <laughs> Sorry about that, cuz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can have your independent state, my bro. Independent state. The independent state of Sam bro. Yeah, you can. We'll start a trade deal with you, Sam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do it. Yeah. Independent state. But uh, uh, a lot of the Fado there on um, on Twitch as well. Yeah, there's a few few people yeah. on Twitch that tonight. Thanks for hanging out. Parallel, yeah, you've been uh, pretty active in there. It's, um, and Māori Maiden, of course. I am Siam. And Axiom, for a while. of course, Axiom. Thanks for your support, Axiom. Oh. Auntie, Auntie Books. Books has been in there. Oh, yeah, there's yeah, Auntie Books actually putting up the link to her TikTok. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Auntie Books. Too much, too much, Auntie. That's the one. Choo, 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 choo. Oh, well, that's us for another, um, uh, another day. Hey, uh, I've got... We'll, um, be, we'll be back again Thursday. Yeah, yeah, Thursday. And we got the bro Nando Tanchos okay. coming on. Oh, is he coming on? Yep. Oh, sure. Nando's oh, uh, booked in. Is he, is he DJing? No, 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 no. He's just going to come on and have a, yeah. Uh, no, no, he's not. <laughs> I tell him to hook his bass up. You may, uh, he gets a bit fucking mad, I think. <laughs> on his bass. <laughs> he's good. But uh, the uh, Nando is another uh, person that I appreciate for uh, their thoughtful consideration around these really complex issues. Um, and I appreciate him in the local government space, so aroha mai, I will pre-warn you all that we will be talking a little bit of local government, uh, futures for local government. So at the moment, I'm sitting in quite a few workshops where we're reimagining what uh, local government is. Is the current representation model that we have fit for purpose? Probably not. Um, and so how do we incrementally make our way into the future into the future development <laughs> yeah the dreary politician that's the one the dreary politician he'll uh, come on and uh, and he's a he's a real rastafarian yeah. he's not one of those ja yeah. rastafari fake rastafarians oh, yeah. that you know most people are he's yeah. an actual practicing rastafarian and a celebrant under the rastafarian faith it is a form of really? christianity yep 
Yeah. Totally. Yeah, yeah. And it's a form of Christianity that came out of Ethiopia. It's um, yeah, and he's two to do as two to do as he knows knows yeah. that that. And Hale Salasia is uh, Hale Salasia. his uh, his rangatira, and um, so we can have a little bit of a chat to him about that too. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll be good. That'll be cool. A little so bit of religion. Thursday, and, six p.m. Yeah, I think he'll be. Um, he, I told I know, him to come on at about like six thirty-seven or something like that. Yeah, but well, yeah, I know that we um, we missed it last week, Fano. We didn't uh, show on the Thursday. Why did we not show? Did we have something? We had yeah, yeah, we had a Nakama Tohui. Oh, that's right, that's right, yep. So, uh, no. It's just, oh, my foot heavy, Yeah, 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 but yeah. We'll, yeah. Um, and we'll see how we'll long... Change of, you'll be able to see how far along uh, Dad is on his painting with his couple of ninjas there. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I feel like you're painting that Wellington occupation right there, my father. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> I know, you know those... Uh, Nefarious elements look yeah, like they're yeah. coming through. <laughs> <laughs> the secret squirrels. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I'm just making things up as it comes. Yeah, yeah. I'll show you my incremental change if you show me yours, Sam, bro. Yeah, now nah, all goods. We'll have a. Uh, we'll, all right, we'll, you fellas. Okay. Cheer okay. my bro. Bye.